My name is Keanu Arpel Josiah. I'm 18 years old. Um, I'm with Fridays for Future New York City, and I'm here because our planet's on fire, our future's disappearing. This summer was the hottest summer ever on record. The climate crisis is here, and the United States continues to use fossil fuels and continues to expand their fossil fuel use, um, which science just clearly says is incompatible with a livable future. It's critical that fossil fuel expansion end. It's critical that we transition to renewable energy immediately. It's critical to see climate legislation and climate action on the federal level and across the board. Well, I'm here because I'm from Houston, Texas, and I know that you know, the Gulf South is, is often one of the last communities that's brought to the table, um, but is one of the most impacted. And so I just think it's really important for young people and then also frontline communities to be at the front of the table and make our voices heard and then show up visibly so that we can show people that frontline youth voices are here um, and not just sitting on the sidelines. 99% of plastics are made out of fossil fuels um, and those refineries are what my community deals with on a daily basis. So that is my number one concern. Plastic is mostly made out of crude oil, um, which is drilled in the ocean and the BP oil spill in 2010 was a spill of crude oil that was likely perhaps being drilled for plastic. So we see it in a variety of ways in the Gulf South, yeah. <laughs> My name is Tabitha Sudeo. I'm the Director of Community Engagement at IRIS, the Integrated Refugee and Immigrant Services. And we are here to bring um, attention to the plight of climate migrants. We don't really have a lot of conversations about it. It's usually really sensationalized about people rushing the border, but we're here to bring attention to the issue because the United States is a place that's disproportionately using the most amount of fossil fuels. And unfortunately, we don't want to help as many people as we should, even though we are the ones creating the issues. I'm here today because I live in a predominantly black and brown community and the asthma rates are disproportionately higher compared to our white counterparts and our white communities that are right alongside us. So I'm here fighting for my family, I'm here fighting for my community, and I'm here fighting for black and brown people who are obviously disproportionately affected thanks to the climate crisis. When we eradicate fossil fuels, there's enough jobs and for people to actually be stable and dependent, independent from fossil fuels in general. I come from Ecuador, so we just had a really, really important victory where we were able to get the first, we, we made um, an oil project, an active oil project exit the Amazon through popular will. And it's the first example of actual, like a, the beginning of a process of, of a country facing out fossil fuels, and we did that through a national referendum. So, I mean, if Ecuador, a country that's been depending on oil for the last 50 years, can do that, then rich countries can too. And so we need to make sure that um, the world follows the example of my country and of the indigenous people and the young people that fought for this for over a decade because they've been talking and talking about facing out of fossil fuels, but we're actually doing it. This, this march is it's so incredible to see that so many people from different parts of the world, different sectors are coming together for one common goal, which is face out fossil fuels. And that is what we've been pushing for for so many years in the Amazon and definitely for there to not be any new uh, oil expansion. I'm Anishinaabe and Haudenosaunee from the Anyataaga and Bakeshkonon territory. It's based out of southwestern Ontario, what's now known as Canada. I think everything that we do, our way of life, is a form of activism. Systemically, uh, there's been policies that were put in place to erase our identity and erase our culture, so anything that we're reclaiming is a form of activism. Access to clean water, so my community, Walpole Island, we're downstream from 80% of Canada's petrochemical industry, and they're still legally allowed to pollute in our waters today. It's affecting everything. Everything's connected. It affects our people, our women, who are very connected to the water since they're 
uh, the water protectors and the life givers in our community, but it's also protecting our plant life, um, our medicines and the animals, and it's affecting our livelihood, our sovereignty, our right to fish and hunt. Um, it affects everything in our community because everything is connected and especially the water being the life source, you know, it's not a dumping ground, it's, it's what gives us life, it's what gives everything life. And I think if people understood how connected to the water that we actually are, they wouldn't be dumping and polluting harsh chemicals because that is a part of us, that's who we are, we are 80% water. So anything you do to the water, you're doing to yourself. And I just want to shout out to our grandmothers on Walpole Island, our Nokomis, that are leading the way and charging and making sure that they're setting a good example for us youth on how we should be standing up against these corporations and industries. From the island of Guahan from the Mariana Islands, an archipelago in the Pacific, in Micronesia. There's ongoing colonization going on in our islands, in the Pacific, and in the world, and we are victims of mil deep militarization in our communities uh, that threatens our water resources, our land rights, and like I said, we're here to, s to march in solidarity with fellow indigenous peoples because we're all going through the same injustices, and we want climate justice now. Eu sou João Vitor, sou do povo Pancararu, aqui do Nordeste do Brasil. Eu sou atual coordenador dos jovens na Aliança Global de Comunidades Territoriais, uma grande organização que tem jovens líderes em suas comunidades, em suas organizações, fazendo enfrentamento às mudanças climáticas. Nós estamos protegendo cerca de 80% da biodiversidade do mundo. Nós estamos enfrentando de perto, na linha de frente direta, sofrendo os impactos das mudanças climáticas. E nós precisamos que nosso recado seja ouvido. Ou são os povos indígenas, nós somos os guardiões do amanhã. Indigenous people worldwide only make 5% of the world population, but we protect 80% of the biodiversity. We are here with the NDN Collective and Native Movement pretty much to fight for our lands. In Alaska, we're losing our salmon, we're losing our caribou because of the fossil fuel industry. And I believe that indigenous youth will save us and our solutions as Native people will save us. That's why I'm here. We're facing a huge salmon crisis, salmon crisis back home in Alaska. The past three summers we had zero salmon to catch and when we lose access to our salmon, we lose access to our culture. So we need our salmon back, we need our subsistence foods back, and the fossil fuel industry is to blame for all of that. I definitely think the Native youth who are on the line doing the work are great. I think of my friends like Nana Ej Peter, who is Gwich'in, who is doing work to protect the Arctic Wildlife Refuge, people who do work in education equity back home in Alaska. That's what gives me hope. Hola a todos, mi nombre es Nancy Dalia Ramírez Domínguez y soy originaria del ejido Cordón Grande, Estado de Guerrero, México. El futuro que quiero ver es un futuro en donde el eje central sea el respeto hacia la madre tierra, hacia la naturaleza. Imagino un futuro en donde no existen barreras, en donde no existen fronteras, en donde no importa la nacionalidad que tengas, siempre se van a respetar tus derechos. Imagino un futuro donde no exista discriminación hacia las comunidades indígenas y comunidades locales, en donde todos trabajemos de manera colectiva y busquemos el bien común. Existen diferentes maneras de poder colaborar con las comunidades indígenas y comunidades locales, y la principal considero que es la construcción de solidaridad. Reconocer que las comunidades territoriales hemos cumplido un rol muy importante en la lucha y combate contra el cambio climático, es reconocer que todavía hay soluciones que nos pueden permitir que nuestra madre tierra se sane, que nuestra madre tierra resista y para ello debemos estar unificados, debemos de trabajar de manera conjunta. My demands for the future are to begin developing an equitable just transition, one that centers people over profit and another sense of building a new society that does not rely on an extractive economy but rather relies on rather transitions into a regenerative economy where we no longer have to um, continue these systems of exploitation, continue these practices of colonialism, but rather where we begin to center indigenous frontline leadership and where we also center those who are most marginalized and will be most impacted by the climate crisis. If we're looking at like indigenous youth communities, um, you know, not only are we like routinely pushed out of environmental spaces, but 
also like our knowledge and our wisdom and our life experiences um, of both youth and um, our elders aren't respected. Um, I notice a lot of times like we have kind of had to elbow our way into um, environmental spaces um, for our own, you know, our own lands and our own communities. Um, and, you know, of course, we are already seeing the impacts of the climate crisis, whether it's, you know, wildfires and droughts or flooding. Um, you know, it's directly impacting where a lot of you know, my friends and family are living. Um, just last year in New Mexico, there was the uh, largest and second largest uh, wildfires in our, in our state history. Um, and it has devastated a lot of, um, you know, my, my friends who are land-based people who have like, you know, ranches and are taking care of acequias. Um, and yeah, I think it is overall, you know, bringing a sense of hopelessness to our generation to know that we have this big existential problem and nobody seems willing to do anything about it or listen to us when we ask. Um, so that's why we've you know, taken to demanding and we're you know, doing our best to build our own spaces and you know, really build this intergenerational movement. I'm here because I'm from an island nation, Trinidad and Tobago, that's constantly under threat by increasing um, sea level rise, climate change, uh, more unhinged storms. And so when people make decisions to invest in new fossil fuel projects, they're actively endangering communities that I care about. I would like to see no new fossil fuel projects being um, authorized and being funded. I would like to see us rein in the unprecedented wealth of these fossil fuel corporations that are coming into developing nations and doing all kinds of damage. My community is heavily impacted as a frontline community by mostly steel companies and coal companies. As most people know, West Virginia has always been a place of coal. It's always been a place where that's all we're known for, um, but that's just simply not true. We have so much culture. We have so many people who live there every day who have to deal with water that's polluted, um, air that's polluted, not being able to go to school because their school is so close to a coal mine that has been affected. And the biggest thing now is that as coal is turning over and we're not having as much of it in production, um, we still have all the ramifications that came with those coal companies for so many years. So we have acid mine drainage into our rivers, into our waterfronts where people drink, kids have recreational things like swimming and kayaking. So every day people who live in that area are affected. Every day we're reminded and reminded that a big corporation came in and took our land, came in and took our water, and now we're, ref we're left with all the ramifications. The future I want to see is one where we live in harmony with nature, achieving balance with it. This would represent a profound shift in our way of thinking as a society, our values and our priorities. This means recognizing that we are an integral part of the natural world and our well-being is closely intertwined with the health of our planet. This means moving away from the unsustainable and destructive practices that have gotten us to this point of climate crisis. One way to move towards this goal is by learning from indigenous people's way of life. This would mean recognizing the inherent value of indigenous cultures and the significance of acknowledging land rights in preserving it. This is our plea to global leaders.